I consider Minecraft to be a synonym to infinity, but it's a dichotomous infinity that forks right at the start. In the beginning, you have to choose what to build, and that falls under two categories, fiction and non-fiction. But which one's better? Do things that exist grease your goat, or things that don't exist? What's interesting is that when observing the universe and contrasting that with what could exist, you would assume that since the things that don't exist vastly outnumber the things that do, that non-fiction wouldn't be able to keep up with the creative possibilities presented by fiction. But there's there's a poison dart in this raisin tart. We have stupid animal evolved brains that run on weird oozy bio stuff. It's imperfect, which simultaneously is its greatest strength and its greatest weakness. But it limits our ability to channel the realities in our minds, whether they only exist there or also somewhere in another universe. Don't get me wrong, it's pretty cool that the brain has gotten this far in comprehending reality and producing things like fictional art. But surprisingly, nonfiction in comparison still blows away anything we are likely to produce. No computer could ever run a perfect to detail simulation of even just our galaxy, let alone the entire universe. And you don't even need to go that huge in scale for this either. On every level of analysis, from atomic to microscopic and beyond, the reality in which we find ourselves is confounding. So while fictional works of art's capacity for inspiration is incredible, nonfiction is right in front of us and doesn't falter in the way that it surpasses our species' collective attempt to comprehend it at 7 billion strong. It's not all for nothing, though. We can't yet fathom where we are and what it means, but we will someday. And we're getting there. Do you remember in this video where I talked about sometime during our life, we will experience a real universe simulation in a game, perhaps even Minecraft? I was thinking 10, 20, maybe even 30 years, but no, today. Yeah, someone built the universe in Minecraft. This isn't a meme. It isn't a joke. This is Chris Dickow. In order to start building the universe, he first had to start with the world, and the best way to do that, he thought, in the first minute of his video, is to go skydiving. Gotta admit, I'm feeling a little outdone here. Here, let me Google that. Chance of death for skydiving. 0.28% chance. Yeah, f*** that. I've got kids. So he starts with an Earth globe, and we've seen that before, but not with skydiving as the research, which is definitely dedication to the assignment. But then he built the rest of the planets. So in order to study Uranus, he actually sent a probe. No, I'm just kidding. But what's amazing about these planetary builds in Minecraft is that they're all at an angle, even the rings. It's unbelievable how cool these look. Now, when we're building the Earth one-to-one -one scale, there's a cubic chunk glitch we've dealt with from the beginning that creates these random blotchy patches of darkness. While this has always looked awful, if harnessed correctly in creative building, it can create accents that makes the entire thing come alive. And so he painted with Minecraft light to get the aesthetic of planets light side, dark side from being in space real. Obviously this wasn't needed for the sun, which produces its own light through a process that creates death if you're in space, but life if you're on earth. And just like that, we have the solar system in Minecraft but that's not where it ends. Basically what happened from here was seeing the principles involved in building the planetary objects and taking them to galaxy-wide scales and beyond. He built the Pillars of Creation, a supermassive black hole which is probably my favorite along with Saturn, and eventually moved to creating galaxy clusters. These were such a vivid work of reality when put together and flying through them. It looks so realistic. It's hard to imagine just how many planets, suns, asteroids, moons, even supernovas and gas clouds are contained within a single Minecraft block of the build at this point. But he's not done. The scale gets more insane. Why stop at galaxy clusters when you can build the totality of the universe in Minecraft? And that's what he did. It's really interesting how the webbing of the matter and energy between all the dark energy resembles neurons in the brain. Could just be a coincidence or a repeating pattern, or maybe the people in charge of our simulated universe are just trying to troll us. Whatever the case, it takes more than some effort to blow me back. What Chris Dickow has done here is beyond words. But I know what you're all thinking. What does this mean? 
Specifically, could we make a larger project called Build Reality that includes everything perceivable? Could these builds be added to our project of building the Earth? Well, I know the first thing that you want to say, but Pippin, these aren't one to one scale builds, so they couldn't pair with the Earth in Minecraft one to one scale. Hold on a second. Yes, you're right. Chris Tikau changed the scale for each build that he created, but this doesn't actually condemn it from being involved. You could skem in the planets at the right distance away from the ground in our Minecraft Earth so that it's exactly the size it would be if you were stargazing in real life. Before you purists protest about this, keep in mind that the Minecraft sky itself is an illusion, and if you want to get more blatant, the clouds are definitely an illusion. In Vanilla's case, totally inaccurate, and in Shader's clouds, not actually even there. Same with the stars, and sun, and the moon, which in my mind makes it appropriate to put things in our Minecraft Earth atmosphere to create the effect of it appearing the correct size from the vantage point of the ground. And if you want to have more fun, we can put the black hole in the sky just above a major metropolitan area. You could then use that mod Dream created for a black hole in Minecraft and localize the effect inside the black hole build we just put in the sky. But black holes aren't just some of the fiercest objects known to physics that devour everything else and the real life equivalent to Galactus. Physics makes so much nonsense inside their event horizons, it's been theorized they could even be portal to other universes. So that's exactly what we could do for Build the Universe. Have the gravity more and more intense as you get closer, and end up in a different time, a different place, and an entirely different everything, where constants like gravity and the speed of light are not the same as ours. Unfortunate for you, since our biology depends on our universe's physics to function. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. As cool as what we described would be if experienced in Minecraft, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Everything that you've seen, the jaw-dropping eyegasms that we've all experienced together seeing all of this, it's only the beginning of our destiny. In terms of what we're really all thinking about. The universe, one-to-one -one scale. It's out there, in our heads, and it can exist in our computers. I'm here to tell you that it's possible. All these celestial shapes by Chris Dacau, imagine them actually to scale with an unfathomable amount of blocks, making their shape so perfect that it's indistinguishable from reality from a visual perspective. We can do it. Here's how we could start. First, Minecraft is known for its insane world size. The world boasts a 60 million by 60 million radius, large enough to fit the Earth several times. But that's not it. The Cubic Chunks mod allows Minecraft vertical directions to stretch equally high, making a Minecraft world a gigantic 60 million by 60 million by 60 million cube. But that is not big enough. How much of the universe do you think that even covers? Let's talk about a light year. The closest solar system to our own is Proxima Centauri, a measly 4.2 light years away. A Minecraft block is one meter, so how many meters are in a light year? Nine quadrillion, 460 trillion, 730 billion, 472 million, 540,044 meters. 60 million doesn't even come close to covering that distance. But Minecraft's real distance limit is apparently two billion 147 million which still doesn't even come close to a single light year i think i'm starting to grasp exactly how big the universe is and it's scaring me but thankfully a video from ant venom in his long line of work studying the distance limits of minecraft shatters this number with a mod that converts minecraft integer limits to long limits which extends the amount of distance you can go where minecraft terrain still generates to an unfathomable distance. The furthest point under these conditions is this number. But in typical Minecraft fashion, zero being the spawn point, we know that there's an equal amount of distance on the other side, and so you double that number and put it into a meter to light year converter, and you get just about 2,000 light years. That's a lot better. We can get Proxima Centauri and hundreds of other solar system neighbors into our Minecraft one-to-one -one scale universe. But compared to the size of the galaxy, 2,000 is not even close. And even if it was, there's more galaxies than just the Milky Way. We haven't even scratched the surface. So, that's the first hurdle. Minecraft is big, but it needs to get way bigger. A generation distance of something resembling infinity, at least to our tiny brains, 
to even begin to be able to do this. However, another video by Spitz in which he explores how deep the void is in Minecraft alters Minecraft code so that all limitations on teleportation are removed, then goes balls deep. He ran into some glitchy limitations regarding the void, including a point in which he could go no further, but this limitation didn't apply to the sky, so he kept going. Eventually, he decided to spam nines until he maxed out the characters you can type out in a chat message, and it worked. The effect this had on the sky was insane, but not as insane as how high in the sky he actually was. Converted to meters, this number was approximately something called 100 unoctogentillion which is 10 duo septuagintillion times larger than the observable universe. Still, this was an unfathomable distance away from where you can still place blocks in Minecraft in any version of the game you could conjure with mods or otherwise. But with that milestone in mind, we know that there's at least some hope. But there's another problem. Minecraft is famous for struggling with the radius of even just 1,000 meters of render distance that you can see. It would be hopeless to be able to see any part of this, right? Wrong. In a previous video, we covered a glorious little mod called Farplane 2, which allowed for render distance to increase to the world border limit of 32 million in both directions, with seemingly no increase in FPS or hardware strain at all. It is known that this mod could generate terrain beyond the 32 Minecraft world border limit, but it's not known where the limit for this mod is. But what makes this mod possible to begin with is the concept of decreased resolution as distance increases, which is also how our eyes work in real life. Now, our eyes have a distance limit on what we can see only because of the accumulation of stuff in the atmosphere and this concept applies to space even though space is infinitely more empty than Earth's atmosphere. But if there was truly nothing, there's no theoretical limit to how far our eyes could see, and the same principle applies to Farplane 2. The decreased resolution in relation to distance would allow you to see giant cosmic shapes just as if you were flying in space yourself, which only leaves us with one problem. There's been videos on how large a world would be if you were to load every single chunk. It's pretty dismal. Luckily, with Farplane 2, when render distance is maxed out, you can see all 60 million blocks of a world without any of those chunks actually being loaded except for the ones you're extremely close to. And viewing the universe in Minecraft could work the same way. But we couldn't manually build the universe because that would involve loading all chunks of this world that's already insanely larger than the current limits of Minecraft. So that leaves just one option. All of the terrain would have to be naturally generated. Someone would have to create a terrain generation code that maps out the universe in Minecraft. To an exact degree, this is somewhat impossible, or at least improbable. To a general and more approximate degree, I'm not sure. Maybe it would be possible to paint these shapes in a program and then convert it to a terrain generating algorithm that naturally creates it in game without you ever having been there. I'm not exactly sure how that would limit your artistic freedom in creating these shapes in that case, which leaves its capacity for a true representation of its beauty and complexity in real life to be seen virtually into question. So while we have a clear pathway forward regarding expanding Minecraft's generation size as well as viewing distance, it's not really known if pre-generating the universe, even a simplified facsimile of it, could even be accomplished. Additional research is required. If I find an answer in the future, I'll come back to you with an update. People are somewhat astounded by the audacity of Chris Dickow's video and how seemingly random it was. Me? Not really. I've seen these objects in Minecraft before. I've seen them in my dreams. Twinkling lights shooting blinding waves of radiation in the form of cosmic rays across vast expanses of nothingness, occasionally streaked with glittery gas clouds, planetary rings, and asteroid belts. I've seen in my dreams a star go supernova in Minecraft. The sudden explosion of a giant fusion reactor's guts being expunged from its core and flung out into empty space, destroying everything nearby. One of the most momentous occasions in the cosmos, the exploding of a star. And in reality, where we would only be able to view this event with the obnoxiously limited gelatinous orbs stuck in our skulls, in this dream, we could see 
gamma rays. We can smell dark matter. We can feel every possible force of matter, gas, radiation, particle, photon, and otherwise, rolling over us in a wave so intense and glorious only to be matched by the power of black holes themselves. We were evolutionarily crafted by the forces of nature to experience reality at the macro scale of objects relative to our size. But that isn't all we have to be. We could be more. We could augment our experience of the world and the cosmos by enhancing our biology to be able to see the magic that's happening around us every day that we never could see for our entire species history until science cracked the door open a sliver. Seeing and experiencing the universe as humans with five senses gives us a small piece of what is possible. But being the only way we've observed so far, being a part of the universe, a way for the universe to know itself, in some ways bestows a responsibility to know more, to see more. It's as if humanity is on the cusp of two different destinies. We could fall prey to our own pessimism, our anxieties, our short-sighted and nefarious impulses, and plunge the world into darkness again for the millionth time in history. Or we could be courageous and brave. We could hold on. We could keep this world together with hope. Millions of years for significant evolutionary changes in species or geological changes in the earth to occur. And we went from the horse and buggy to landing on the moon in 70 years. We are moving so fast. And if we can keep this together with love, clear thinking, resilience, and a little bit of elbow grease, there's something on the other end of our technological and innovative progress, a door that leads to the universe with complete and utter nirvana on the other side, infinite possibilities, plethoras of experience so vast that you don't even know that you don't know them, complete and utter freedom, peace, and liberation as we soar into the universe's depths to see what's out there with no end to our history, our future, and what it holds for us. A huge thanks to our top, elite, super awesome patrons, Almighty Svet, Echelise, Ji Yang, Megan Lecky, Pixie Gum, and the Demon Slayer. You guys make my little bunny nose twitch with happiness. If you want to hear your name at the end of these videos and want to hear these little blurbs from me, consider becoming a top tier patron.